Racial trauma is a topic in many households, and for some, they don't even know what racial trauma is. To break it down for you all, I will be speaking with Monica Williams, Clinical Psychology. Thank you for joining me today. Oh, thank you. It's great to be here. So first off, what exactly is racial trauma and where exactly does it come from? Right. Well, the term racial trauma, you know, erupted not too long ago, maybe a 10, 15 years ago, really, it's been that long since we've been talking about it. And people actually have been doing research on it. And it's basically a term we use to describe when someone is traumatized due to experiences of racism. So just like someone could be traumatized from assault or combat or a natural disaster, people can actually become pretty traumatized uh, from experiences of racism. And so kind of let's go in a little bit more on how exactly does it impact people or are there specific groups of people that it impacts more? Right. Well, in order to have racial trauma, you have to experience racism. And so that means you're part of a racialized group in whatever society that you live in. And so in our society, people of color, uh, Black people, um, Asian, um, Hispanic people are often um, racialized, and so they experience racism. And so, um, and some people experience more racism than others, even people with a darker skin color, we call that colorism, will experience more racism as well. And the more racism you experience, the more likely it is that you'll have racial trauma. And, um, and those symptoms can look a lot like post-traumatic stress disorder, anxiety, flashbacks, nightmares, not really feeling like you can talk about it, but you can't stop thinking about it. Um, but sometimes it can cause other kinds of symptoms too, like social anxiety, being afraid to be around people because you just never know if they're going to um, do a small act of racism against you, like maybe a racial microaggression. Mm -hmm. And if you're already sensitive from so many experiences of racism, even small covert acts of racism, you know, can be triggering for you. So you mentioned a few things. I heard microaggressions. I heard colorism. So for those who really don't know what that is, what is colorism and what is microaggressions and what does it look like? Right. So colorism is when someone is treated badly or treated differently because of the shade of their skin. And sometimes even people within specific ethnic groups will perpetrate colorism to other people with, within their own group. For example, um, a Black person with lighter skin may be um, treated differently than a Black person with darker skin, or a Hispanic person with darker skin um, may, be, may be mistreated by other Hispanic people with lighter skin. So, um, so that's what we call colorism. And it can happen within your own group or from people outside of your group. Wow. And so microaggressions, I, we hear that word. Some people use it in um, certain instances. What exactly are microaggressions and what does that look like? And is it different depending on the group? Right. Yes. So microaggressions are small acts of covert racism, or they, they could be unintentional acts of racism. And, um, and they do look differently for different um, racial ethnic groups because they're always rooted in stereotypes about people in that group. And we know different, uh, different groups have different stereotypes about them. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, um, so somebody who's, say, an Asian American, they may experience microaggressions when people come up to them and say, oh, where are you from? Or, oh, you speak English really well, even if they were born here, right? And so that's a little bit insulting. And it wouldn't maybe be so bad if it only happened to you once, but if it's happening to you, you know, every week, eventually that gets old, right? Mm -hmm. You want people to realize, no, I'm from here. I live here. I speak English fluently. Um, and for, um, for Black people, there could be different types of microaggressions. For example, assumptions that somebody is a criminal, right? Maybe you're walking down the street and you see people locking their doors um, or, you know, you get on an elevator and somebody clutches their purse because they're automatically assuming that because you're black, that you're dangerous. 
Yeah. And so why is it important to have these discussions? I mean, February is Black History Month. And I think that this is a time for those who aren't part of the Black community who, or who want to learn more about it can educate themselves. So why is it important to have conversations about racial trauma, um, microaggressions and colorism? Well, this is really important because, for example, uh, among Black people, Black people are often experiencing acts of racism. Um, often they're coming from white people. And um, if people aren't aware that they're committing racism and they're not aware of the harm they're causing, well, they're not going to change that behavior. And unfortunately, so many people of color have just gotten so used to dealing with racism or they've tried to point it out and have been told they're imagining it that um, that it just sort of ends the conversation. And so if nobody's talking about it, we can't really change it. And so this is why it's so important to have the conversations because it's an everyone issue. It's not just like a black person issue. Like everybody needs to step up and commit to anti-racism. Right. And so that pegs the question on how can people help? How can people help if they see those microaggressions or see those racism and see that in somebody they care about or someone that they know um, and who, you know, not necessarily part of the black community, but want to help? What can they do? Right. Exactly. Everyone can be part of the solution. I mean, the first step is learn about um, about racism and ways that you might be propagating racism in your own environment without even realizing it. And um, and so often when I teach on these things, I hear people say, oh, I didn't know that was racist. Oh, I do that all the time. And they feel bad, actually, that they've hurt other people. And so I would say that's the first step. And also, if you see somebody um, engaging in a racism, even if it's a small act, it's good to let them know. And sometimes the person who's on the receiving end um, is not in a position to say anything because maybe of a power differential. But a bystander can be an ally and say, hey, you know what, that wasn't okay. Um, you know, that's actually an act of racism. So those are some ways we can um, help change our culture and change our behaviors um, so that we start to experience these, experience these things less often. And now what does racial trauma have, if any, and when others see videos such as Tyree Nichols and George Floyd and see those police brutality videos or just others um, in their own group experiencing racism, what does the role that racial trauma has in that? Right. Well, for one, so many um, so many black people have experienced so much racism. Again, even small acts of racism can be triggering when you've dealt with it so much. Mm -hmm. And then when you see things on um, social media or the news or television where uh, black people are being mistreated, uh, that can be very triggering, too, because if you're a member of those communities, well, you relate to the people that are being harmed um, because that could be like your uncle or your father or your brother or your son. I mean, I've had my own son um, pulled over and stopped by police before and um, made to step out of the car and um, and threatened and searched. And as a mom, it was terrifying when I heard about this because I know how easily things can go sideways and some innocent person can can be harmed. And so, you know, and so when we see other black people um, harmed like this, it's terrifying. Uh, absolutely. And, you know, any final words that you would like to say um, about this topic? It's very important. And again, this is a month and every month where we're just really trying to educate people who don't quite understand um, some of the um, issues that impact the Black community. Right. Well, I would say um, there's probably many of us who suffer from racial trauma. And if you're finding that it's getting in the way of kind of having the happy, uh, fulfilling life that you want to lead, then you should do something about it. It would be really important to uh, talk to other people who can be supportive, get support, uh, get support from people in your family or your networks or your communities, um, talk to a therapist or a counselor or a clergy person um, or even a psychiatrist if this is causing um, a lot of distress for you, but don't just um, don't just let it get worse. I would say it's really important to get the help you need. 
Absolutely. Really important. If you uh, need help, reach out to someone, talk to a friend, talk to a professional. Well, thank you, Monica Williams, clinical psychologist, uh, for speaking with me today. Oh, you're very welcome.